This is Cecilia with Don't Drool on the Wool, and I am working on my Habitat cardigan. I'm using <sighs> Lion Brand Heartlands, Heartland yarn in the color Badlands. It's like this burgundy, rusty, reddish, purplish color, and it's super soft. It is 100% acrylic, right? Yes. So it's machine washable and dryable and it's so like soft. I really like it. I bought six skeins and hopefully that is enough to get me through this entire cardigan. If not, I will have to buy more. Um, this is going to be my second Habitat cardigan. I just actually finished one using Cloudborn wool, wool, Bulky Wool Naturals, which says it's a bulky weight, but it is a worsted weight. And it is a very high twist yarn. The stitch definition is very pretty, but it's not a very soft yarn. Um, it's definitely has itch factor to it. And I just finished that one last week and I wanted to share it. It's, yeah, it has that really pretty, this stitch pattern is basically where you just knit. I always say knit instead of crochet because I've been crocheting only for like six years and I've been knitting for like 20 years. So forgive me. It's where you, crochet one, single crochet, and then you do a double crochet into the same stitch and you repeat that. And then this part is like a half double crochet into the front stitch only for like the collar. And I'm just going to wear it for you guys. I'm going to insert a picture at the end of me wearing it because you can't really see it in my video because my video is not amazing. I'm sorry. It's just not. But I wanted to share because it's been very fun to work on and I wanted to see if anybody else had used this yarn. This yarn for the sweater that I'm wearing is actually is itchy. I don't like this sweater. Oh my God, I don't like it. Oh my God, I spent so long crocheting it and I don't like it. That makes me so sad. <sighs> it took me two weeks to crochet this sweater. But it looks pretty, it really does. And I could see wearing it going camping or something, like if I was wearing a long sleeve shirt underneath. Um, but it just has that itch factor and that, makes me sad which is why i'm crocheting a new one in the softer yarn this yarn is very soft um somehow i have changed as a knitter from like a yarn snob who always bought only wool and only like really fancy wool to a crocheter who buys a lot of acrylics and works with that a lot. And my stash is probably a little bit of everything. I have a little bit of cashmere, you know, a little bit of wool, a little bit of alpaca. I don't like alpaca personally. I think it's too itchy. The fibers are too long, I think, and hairy, they itch. But, um, but yeah, I have a lot of wool, I have a lot of acrylic, I have a lot of blends. And this particular one, which is 100% acrylic, is very, very soft. I think that the technology that has changed from, you know, like the 80s when the wool, when the acrylic yarns were really super scratchy and squeaky, it's really made a big difference to what is possible now as far as acrylic yarns go. Um, but yeah, so this week 
I'm thinking about doing a, a monthly podcast for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and call this my first one because I'm doing the sit down and crochet and talk. And um, I'm doing this because I enjoy watching other people's podcasts. I like seeing what people are working on and what they've been purchasing and what they've been planning on working on and knitting and crocheting. So um, I will start to make this knitting and crocheting. Um, and this month, so this is November, today is November 6th. And so it's November and that means we're going into December and we're going to Christmas projects, right? And I don't know that I'm going to crochet or knit anything for anybody for Christmas this year. I usually do, at least my sister, and I usually do. And I actually do have one pair of socks. I'm gonna show them. I don't know if I've showed them already, but I'm going to show them because they're right here. They are just ribbed socks. They're knit to pearl to rib. And I think they look really super comfortable and they are washable. <gasps> are they washable? If they're not washable, then I'm not giving them to my mom because she will shrink them. But I think I'm gonna give them to my mom for Christmas because she loves my knit socks. So I'm gonna give her those. And I think that's the extent of what is going to be gifted this year because I hate Christmas honestly and I'm sick of making things for people and then they don't wear them or they don't like them you know personally if I make something for myself and I don't wear it like this cardigan that I just finished. It's a itch itchy and I'm probably not gonna wear it very often, but I'll wear it occasionally. And I appreciate the effort that went into it because I made it. I don't know how you guys feel about selfish knitting versus working on things for other people and whether you always receive, whether your gifts are always well received but I know that I, mine are not always well received. Um, so this next month, what I plan on finishing is this cardigan for sure, 100%. And after this cardigan is done, I think my main project, because I've been going to AA meetings every Tuesday night, so that's an entire hour where I just get to sit and work on something. Um, I, I really like working on sweaters because they're big and they're plain and there's not very much work to be doing. You can kind of do it while you're absentmindedly doing something else. So I think after I work on this sweater, I might finish up my red fuzzy sweater that I started which I have a project, I have it, oh my gosh, I should show you guys my project because you're watching and I might as well show you. So I will. Okay, it's under my bed, so forgive me. But I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna squeeze down here. Do, 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 do. this bag. I have a ball of yarn. Big twist. This is something I bought to make my mom a vest. Why I bought it and then just put it under my bed. I do not know, but I have this project. It's red and it's fuzzy. My goodness. I was hoping to make this one for like Christmas. I really, I really like it actually. I might work on it today. It's made out of this um, fuzzy, what is this yarn? 
I bought it at Joann's, I think. And it's just an acrylic as well. It's called Buttercream Angel Hair. It was on clearance for $3.87 a ball. I think I got 10 balls. It's a bulky weight. And it is made of 51% acrylic, 27% polyamide. Oh, excuse me. And 22% wool. And it's so fluffy. And I picked this red color because I just thought Christmas. So after I finish my crocheted cardigan, I think I'm going to be working on this sweater so that I can get a little bit of work done. All I need, it's just going to be a plain, I think I'm doing a raglan sleeve. I haven't even decided. I'm doing a top, bottom up, Elizabeth Zimmerman style, just, you know, EPS percentage method. Um, and I'm just going to make the two tubes for the sleeves, connect everything, and then probably just do raglan decreases. Just a really plain knit sweater, maybe a turtleneck because it's so soft. Like it's such a soft yarn that I wouldn't mind it being on my neck. I don't know. I definitely want it to be oversized. Oversized and red and soft. Something to wear over leggings for Christmas morning. That's what I'm thinking. I always have these in envision, like envision these ideas of where and when I'm going to work on where and where and when I'm going to wear my finished objects like I have this idea like with my habitat cardigan that I completed the one that's itchy I'm like oh but it's perfect to wear at the campfire when I'm camping with a long sleeve shirt underneath you know like specifically this specific outfit that I don't even have I don't know why I'm always thinking perfect Perfect plans that don't end up happening. But yes, I have also on Ravelry joined a. I've been in this cold sheep group, so we're not supposed to be buying yarn. But I haven't been active in the group, and I have been buying yarn. And so I'm going to start being more active in the group and stop buying yarn which will be boring for you podcast watchers because you won't be able to see acquisitions. But I am planning on showing garments that I've made in the past because I have found a bunch of them while I was unpacking and I'm enjoying showing them, sharing them. Um, yeah, so I will probably work on setting up a genuine podcast style template, you know? And then share it with you guys and hopefully anybody cares in the whole world if one person cares that's awesome and i'm happy yeah so i am in happy love with this project now i think i'm just gonna work on it instead of my crochet one my crochet one i've been bringing with me to my aa meetings and man i wish i had like six pairs of hands and i could just do everything at once that would be so cool but no i have to practice patience. It's very, very unfair. But I don't know if you're a crocheter, you probably have noticed that I crochet weird. I crochet differently than most people. I crochet like a knitter. I think most people crochet with the carrying the yarn in this hand and they do it where they dig it with their wrists. And I'm not sure exactly how to do that but I can't do it I just I do it my way and it still works eventually you still get a garment but yeah so I have purplish and red and that's my projects that I'm working on right now and then I have a sock and a shawl The shawl is here. I know you know you know about the shawl. You're where 
I've only gotten so much done. I've only gotten this much bound off. And so I still have all this to go. This is halfway here. <gasps> Did I just drop a stitch? No, I didn't. So this is halfway. And then that's the shawl. It's the You Are Enough shawl. I really like it. It's really pretty. It's really soft too. But I just, the Pico bind off is so boring. I just can't deal with it. It's just so boring. I should, I should bind off a couple more stitches. I should do that right now. Like legitimately right now after I put away all these other projects. Um, let's see if I have another project to share. There's a lot of yarn in here. Just shove that puppy back in there. I have another sweater. Yeah, so I started crocheting a little swatch to do the vest for my mom. And ran out of patience. Ah, yes. Here's another project. It is the beginning of a sweater. It's knit out of this other buttercream kind of yarn that I got at Joann's in this grayish purplish color and it is why I decided to make a seed stitch pattern I mean not seed stitch but it's like a basket weave kind of can you see it it's very ugly and boring to work on so I've got that under my bed also underneath my bed I also have this green Scarf. Oof. Which is actually, it's almost done, really. I just have this much more wool. Um, I think it's acrylic, actually. I don't know if I have another ball of this. I sure hope I do, because... I don't think this is going to be long enough to make a scarf, really. Maybe. It's so close to being done, I should just knit it and complete it and call it good, bro. Like, this is all that's left. I don't even have another ball in there. And then I would have a scarf complete. Why do I do this? Why? So many projects. I was on the internet, I was on Facebook, and somebody posted, um, I finished all my knitting projects and now I'm learning how to work the continental method. And I was like, is this a joke? Is this a meme? How do you finish all your knitting projects? Like, are you sure you've finished them? Because that sounds like a crock of shit. So anyway, obviously I have an unhealthy relationship with casting things on, starting new projects when I haven't, you know, finished the first project. Um, one day I would really like to go through and find all of my projects that I'm working on because I know for a fact that I have a pair of mittens. I know I have another pair of mittens. I know I have three pairs of socks. I know I have another sweater, there's a knit sweater, and another sweater, another knit sweater, and um, that's just off the top of my head that I know that I have that I'm still working on, um, but I'm not actively working on any of them. These are things that are like hibernating, that are just in the closet or in my craft room just tucked away somewhere and this is bad I have a problem no not good what the heck am I doing I have a issue I need a 
tissue for my issue. Yeah, so definitely, definitely overwhelmed with projects. And I don't have a lot of time to actually work on the projects. But yeah, so by the next episode, I should have this scarf completed because I only have a little bit left. And I should have the cardigan completed because it should only take two weeks like the other one did, hopefully. And I should have, I should be able to admit having at least bound off a few more Pico bind offs on my shawl, hopefully. And I should have no more yarn to show because I should be cold turkey, not buying any yarn. Oh, I have one more finished project. Oh my gosh. Ah, I'm sorry. I keep walking away from you. This is like so awful. But this one is made with some Malabrigo. I got this in Placerville in a little yarn shop called Lofty Lou's and it's crochet because all of my knitting needles are packed up right now but it's just a little hat with this little shell shell kind of stitch at the bottom and I made it and I think it's cute and I just made it for fun just because I went to this yarn shop and I can't go into a yarn shop and not buy yarn because I would like to support small business owners. So <sighs> I made a hat. And then with the remaining bits of the yarn, which there wasn't very much, I just crocheted a little swatch. And then I folded it up and I gave it to my rats. So they have a nice Malabrigo blanket inside of their cage right now. They're the most spoiled rats in the world. They don't even know it. Um, this is chaos. So anyways, I really hope that while I talked your ear off that you were able to get a couple rows in on whatever you're working on and that you tune back in next month because I should have some more to share. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful month.